Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Coffee with Kem and Hills. It is Monday. We are starting off the week ready to go, raring to go. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's get into it. I'm just trying to put us in the right mindset. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> Fake it till you make it, right? That's exactly <laughs> it. That's how I feel on Monday morning. <sighs> did you have a good weekend? I did. Um, we actually went to a baseball game. You did? Haven't been to one in obviously years. Did the baseball um, season just start? It just started. Wrong? So it was opening weekend. So oh, okay. it was pretty fun to go to. I knew something. Yeah, you did. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Do you have a team that you follow well we went to the phillies game because that's where we live but right. they were playing the oakland a's which is the team that my husband supports okay. i'm a san francisco giants fan okay but um yeah so it was really fun it felt like kind of being at home i just like the beer yeah and I the, like the atmosphere yeah, yeah the beer totally. and the bra it's just totally. like it's an atmosphere thing to me i always think when i go to baseball games because i don't know anything about it I always am like craving someone like announcing exactly what's happening, but it's like silent. It's kind of a quiet sport, like when you're actually at the game. People get very tense about it when it is like important, like the innings are up in the, you know, mm -hmm. or it's, like it's people a, are the like really watching it, but I don't know. So I'm like, la 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 la, you're drinking my beer. I don't know what's going yes. on. Yes. But it's fun. I Same. have a great time. Same. Yeah, that's how I am too. <laughs> What about you? Did you do anything fun? Um, we I did actually. I got out of the house. What? <laughs> I went into the city. I went into New York and uh. my husband was well, his friend was putting on it's actually his second show that he's doing. He was doing um a little concert series that he created himself. Okay. Sometimes like the theater theater people do that at these like different spots in the city. Yeah. And he just I love how it was just like a jam session. That's cool. It was really like chill it wasn't overly manicured or thought through they didn't even tam was going he's like we didn't even rehearse i was like are you nervous he's like he just he didn't want to rehearse but he's that kind of he just you know was, just go by feeling you're just yeah. like this is just what's going on but it's kind of fun because you go to so many of them and they're just like so rehearsed like mm. everyone gets up there and you know they're like start the piano and they sing their song but this was just uh. like chill and amazing singers and it was imperfect but that made it like fun and funny cool. and stuff but it was it was good it was good to kind of feel like an adult out in the city dressed up wow. not just momming in the house you know <laughs> yes yes I do know what you mean <laughs> it's very nice um all right well let's get into some hot topics yeah hot topics yes we're going to be talking about inflation and food prices all the fun things yes that are affecting Everybody. Yes, every right household. Yes. yes. So this article is from CNBC. It, um, here's an item by item look at how much more expensive your groceries are due to inflation. Um, and the depressing thing about this article is that food prices are expected to increase between 3% and 4% by the end of 2022. Yes, and they have already increased 7.9% since last February. Yeah. So almost 8% since uh, for in the past year. Yeah. I think everyone is aware of this now mm -hmm. when they're checking out at the grocery store. I think everyone is like, okay, this is, this is not familiar. Yeah. At least those who, like we're pretty regimented about what we buy. We know what we like. Mm -hmm. And so it's been very clear to us. Yes. And we go to Trader Joe's. Right. You know? Yeah. And even there, mm -hmm. Trader Joe's. I was at Whole Foods, which I love Whole shopping. Paycheck. Yes, I love shopping at. Um, I was getting some stuff for work, and I was like, "Oh, I'll just get some pre-cut fruit because that just makes my life easier. I don't have time." Yep. It was fifteen dollars. That sounds about right for two pounds of pineapple, and I was like, "I can buy one pineapple for three ninety nine and cut it up myself," which I'm. Perfectly capable of doing. I know, I know. It is overwhelming when you look at that pineapple, though. You're yeah. like, oh, oh, I don't know. Am I going to tackle you or not? And then it rots in your kitchen. You're like, <laughs> shit. <laughs> there is that. There is that. It's about and making sure it's ripe enough, but not too yes. ripe. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, and avocados. Mm. Everyone knows mm -hmm. about an avocado. But um, fruit is one of the more expensive items because it's ranged from 1.1% to 15% of cost increase mm -hmm. depending per category. yes per category yeah so we have meat poultry fish and eggs at 13% <laughs> which you've definitely i mean i know you're 
uh, pescatarian. Yes. So you probably haven't felt this quite as much. Not um, as much, But no. we certainly have, and yeah. it is... It's amazing how much prices have gone up. Well, um, I read that bacon is 17%. Yes. We're like hard pass on the bacon. I love bacon, uh, but it's like, like a special treat these days. Yeah, it's a very special treat. <laughs> and I actually, as a pescatarian, when I talk to like full carnivores, bacon is always the thing that they're like, that's the thing I could never give up. It's like people have a very special relationship with bacon. It's true. Bacon and burgers. Like burgers. There's just like not that I want a burger all the time, totally. but I just there's times when you just want burgers are the one burger. thing that I sometimes will like cave and I'll have a burger yeah. if I feel like I just need that hit of red meat. There you yeah. go. Yep. Um, what else is there? Fresh fruit? Fresh fruit, ten point six percent. Mm-hmm. Ouch. But veg is only at four point three percent. So Come to the vegetable there you world. Go. Come to the vegetable <laughs> world. Seems pretty steady and actually lower than the average um, yeah. inflation for uh, food prices. Yeah. Why is, is no one buying vegetables? <laughs> well, I think it has to do with typically vegetables are sourced um, closer to the supermarket. Right. Um, and so the cost of trucking has gone mm. up and the cost of moving different mm. vegetables around. So I believe that that's one of the reasons why it stayed a little bit lower because they're this. like heartier, you know, you don't, they are, I love vegetables. Yeah. Can you not tell? I really like, I just love them. <laughs> I don't know if it's a blood type thing or if I believe in that, but according to my blood type, I am a pescatarian. <laughs> huh. Is that interesting? Where did you take this test? I don't know. Who knows? Oh, okay. I'm sure it's not a reliable source. All right. All. Cosmo. <laughs> It's Cosmo. <laughs> All the good tests are Cosmo. Come from Cosmo. Um, the article offered a sample cart showing price increase on specific items mm -hmm. for 2021. Mm -hmm. Yes. I thought this was interesting for a couple different reasons. One, that spam was on there. I wasn't sure. Like, I wanted, I just wanted to know for myself how many, how, like, popular spam was. I think it's very regional, um, and I think it's also interesting. It will probably go up in popularity because the cost of fresh meat is so much more expensive. Right. Um, but if you go to Hawaii, like everybody eats spam, spam, and it is amazing. Have you had it? Oh yeah. I'm not. I'm First not. First of all, my it. dad like, loves it. But really? second of all, when you go to Hawaii, like you just like have to have spam. I mean, you don't have to. You're a pescatarian, mm -hmm. but like it is so good. What is in it? It's just. Mystery meat, assorted pork parts, I believe. Oh Lord! And lots and lots and lots of sodium. All right, so there were two items on the list that um, increased the most, and one of which I was not surprised at all. It was ground Starbucks coffee that went up one dollar and four cents. And we know that they have increased their prices in their stores, so yes. not surprised that they also increased their prices for their wholesale products. Yes. We've talked about this before mm -hmm. on the show. Yeah. Um, but the one that went up the most, one dollar and eighteen cents, is an eight ounce can of Campbell's soup. Which you think would remain a dollar and eighteen cents for a Campbell's eight ounce can of soup is a lot. That's like probably like doubling total price. Mm -hmm. Like, what's going on, Campbell's? Mm. Like, is that necessary? Like, where are you getting your soup from? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That shocked me. But um, okay, so the article does give ways to combat these price surges. Mm -hmm. Um, use the right credit card, like maybe one that gives you points towards grocery shopping. Mm -hmm. That's smart. I think it's also a time where, and I think not everybody, but certain people have gotten away from using coupons and yeah. that sort of thing. And they're still relevant. You can still find them. Well, now there's apps, right? And now there's apps that can help you use them. So definitely, mm -hmm. you know, signing up for whatever grocery store chain you use the most, right. like you don't have to like do the rewards paper and cut them yeah. out anymore. You can actually like go into an app. Right. <laughs> exactly. Of course there's an app for it. Um, it also says buy in bulk. Yes. Costco. Right. Do you, are you a member of Costco? We aren't a member. Um, but anytime my mother-in-law comes to visit, we basically do go run. to Costco and do a run. <laughs> and in nice. fact, I have a 25 pound bag of flour on my, oh my um, gosh. in my kitchen right now. You could do some baking. Oh my gosh. Well, it's so funny. We make a lot of pizza dough from scratch as well nice. as pancakes. Yep. So we do go through flour mm -hmm. very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a lot. It's a lot. And it's funny. My husband was shopping at Costco yeah. and he was like, I was like, if you can find it for, if, if they have flour for less than one twenty nine a pound, which is what we pay at our local grocery store, right. then get it. And right. he was like, I mean, it's 25 pounds. And I was like, 
yeah, we'll go through it quicker than you think, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. But like that's, and that's the always the thing you should do too. Right. If you're buying in bulk, make sure you're looking at the um, cost per ounce, cost per pound, yeah, yeah. that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And also, are you going to get through all of it mm -hmm. if before it expires, if it expires? Right. Like flour, we've got time. Right, right, right. You want to look for the items <laughs> but, that you have some time. <laughs> but if you're buying, I don't know, I feel like we always get broccoli in bulk from um, Costco and yeah. it's always like on its last leg yeah, by the time we finish that's the a little bag. Sketchy. And it's a little sketchy like, after a while. You're like, okay, that was a little rough. <laughs> We're really going to cook this. Right, exactly. <laughs> we do like diapers, mm -hmm. diapers in bulk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wish I could say I was like a natural diaper user. I really wanted to be, right. but alas, mm -hmm. <laughs> just couldn't do it. I know. Um, and then swap out expensive items. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So meat, as we know, has gone up a lot, especially bacon. Yeah. So swapping it out for more vegetarian friendly op options mm -hmm. is actually a way to help save that budget. Yep. I know for us, a lot of it, we tried to shop organic mm -hmm. and we have been swapping out to non-organic mm -hmm. just because we have to. It's just like, mm -hmm. it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. And the other thing you can do is also buy frozen vegetables, which are typically cheaper mm -hmm. than buying fresh and frozen is typically just as nutritious. You just have to cook it slightly differently. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is that a, is that, cause I, you know, you hear like it loses mm -hmm. its nutritional value if it's frozen or whatever, but is that typically, is they this actually, a myth? Can we bust Typically it? they actually, I am not a food scientist. I like caveat. The spot. Um, but my understanding is that typically Fruits and vegetables are frozen at yeah. like kind of their peak freshness. So as long as you don't overcook them, right. which you could do with regular vegetables, and you're you'll rarely still get cooking a fruit. So. Right, right, exactly. You're probably putting in a fruit smoothie exactly, or yes. something like that. Yep. Um, you'll still retain a lot of the nutritional value. Right. So there you go, frozen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Try frozen. Try Why frozen. Not? Mm -hmm. um, all right, we're going to take a quick commercial break, but we'll be right back with more hot topics and hot coffee. Mm -hmm. Welcome back everyone. Now we have a very, very interesting hot topic to dive mm -hmm. into. One that makes me feel, again, I get the sweats when we talk about the metaverse, <laughs> I swear. <laughs> um, so the article is titled, uh, 300,000 Dolce & Gabbana Tierra you can only wear in the metaverse. And this is from business? Uh, this is from the Wall Street Journal. I should be section. asking, I should be asking before. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's hard to tell. I'm telling you when I get the articles, I'm like, Where's the, yeah. Anyway, Wall Street Journal. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, so when I was first reading about this, I was like, these companies must be laughing because it costs them, what, zero to create a... I mean, you're paying for labor for somebody to create digital art. Digital art. Yeah. But, but when the, the material, terms of materials, are, right, yes. And if just, some of these things are actually going for more than the mm -hmm. actual live physical, physical yes. product. product yeah the margins must be incredible well i think it's interesting so they're talking about how the luxury houses have gotten into um nfts and mm -hmm. creating products specifically for the metaverse um and i think it and it's interesting because to your point yes they are saving on the materials, but they're still having to create like the art, the product. What if there's not like real diamonds right. and crystals? Right, this $300,000 Dolce & Gabbana um, tiara. Yes, you aren't actually paying for the materials, Yeah, but um, you're paying for somebody's, you know, labor and creative, creative ingenuity to <laughs> make the crystals, crystal, you know, sparkle in the metaverse. Oh my gosh. Um, but it's interesting, like it's been mixed su success, which I think is really interesting. Yeah. Um, there's been one brand called Colton Rain, which is a sneaker brand out of New York. Mm -hmm. And they actually started um, their company because they were having, um, they, they were seeing that there were too many counterfeit sneakers out there. Right. And, um, so NFTs were a way to, so you get an actual physical sneaker as well as the virtual one. Is this the same and person that wanted to put like chip, chip the shoe? Yes. yes. So they microchip the shoe so that you know that it is attached to this NFT right. so that 
you aren't um, getting a fake, basically, right. which is interesting. Selling them for seventeen hundred, almost eighteen hundred dollars, and how you're getting both. Yes, you're getting your NFT with mm -hmm. your physical sneaker. Right. It's interesting the ones that provide an NFT as well as the physical merchandise to go along with it. Mm -hmm. Like D&G did this with their um, their G Genesis collection, and they had nine different items that was that were either haute couture and or accessories, mm -hmm. and that's where this tiara was part of. Right. Um, so you got not only the NFT, but also the physical item for five of those nine, and they fetched a higher price point. Right than just the NFTs, which makes sense because you get the physical thing and the metaverse thing. So you get to wear it in both worlds. Well, and then I thought it was interesting that, you know, these big brands are dropping, you know, only so many of mm. these items. And then the, the buyers, the people who frequent the metaverse are quickly obtaining mm -hmm. them and then selling them yes. at a higher cost. Right. It's almost like a sneaker drop where you're seeing, I mean, not so much, well, maybe still these days, but like when Jordans came out or come out, it's like in the everyone. physical world, everyone gets them. And yeah. then the resale market is where we really make the money. Right, 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 right. I mean, this whole idea now that pe people are wanting to have their avatar seen in these, you know, luxury brand accessory with these, you know, accessories mm -hmm. that cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, but I'm like, okay, well, one, the stress that we have to dress ourselves physically in, <laughs> in life, now we have to worry about dressing our avatars mm -hmm. as well. I mean, this is like not only stressful on our pocketbooks, but like, it's, yeah, it's a, that's a lot to think about. <laughs> Yeah, I have a hard enough time figuring out what my outfit's going to be for normal life. I don't like know if I need to like, life. do both. But maybe it's something where it would be the norm where you just have one outfit for your avatar. Although I imagine if you're spending a lot of money on it, you'd want to change it out. Uh. <laughs> yeah, it, the, it, the whole thing is is very confusing to me because I don't want to feel like I'm not... I'm Everyone's staring at my avatar like, oh, that avatar... Didn't what? get the cool sneakers. That avatar has been wearing the same thing for two months now. And you're like, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's my virtual. default look. Right? I don't know. It's see, every time we get a new article, I'm not I'm not getting more sold on the idea. <laughs> I'm becoming more fearful of it. But well, you and the owner of um Moy Hennessy Louis Vuitton, who Bernard Arnault is also not sold on the metaverse. Okay. So they have only like slightly tested into it. Mm -hmm. um, whereas Caring um, SA has like gone kind of a, all more in. into it and are testing and learning versus LVMH is like, we'll wait and see how this kind of plays out. They've they're like dabbled, everyone else do it. They've dabbled then, a little bit, but yeah. they're like, we feel like this is a bubble. Um, yeah. So we'll see. We'll they see might as well wait it out and see what happens with the other companies that are going, you know, balls to the wall. Yeah. I don't know. Like to your point earlier, it's not that it costs them that much money to try and play in the space. Well, yeah. I'd... So you might as well make some money while it's hot, right? Well, you think these digital creators, mm -hmm. artists, right. would be really savvy and smart in, in what they charge because they must know that the margins are in their favor. You yeah. Know? <laughs> right. With what they're making on it? I mean, wow. Mm -hmm. Well, there you have it. Do y'all have anxiety? I have some anxiety now. <laughs> <laughs> How are you dressing your avatar in the metaverse? Yes. I want to, like, please share if if you are involved in any capacity. I really want to know what it's like in there. <laughs> Let us know. All right. On that note, we're going to take a quick commercial break, but we will be right back so I can remind you about all the shows airing today on ROI TV. Welcome back, everyone. I just want to remind you not to miss today's episodes of Your Money, Your Wealth, ETF Stories, and Life's Third Act. You can catch all of these on all of our streaming platforms. We have a lot. 
Tell us all about them. <laughs> We're available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and also on your phone, um, whether you have an iOS or an Android phone. So check us out and start your financial literacy today. Yeah, we're not in the metaverse quite yet, but I'm sure we'll get there at some point. <laughs> All right, we will see you tomorrow for another episode of Coffee with Kem and Hills.